Melody Woosley, Department of Human Services Director, City of San Antonio. So, Melody, um, tell me how this came together and why. And so, in, um, in the spring, really, the City Council Quality of Life Committee requested that city staff look at uh, current regulations that are, are associated with feeding the homeless. And so, we started doing that research. They um, also asked us to come up with some policy options and recommendations that would you know, help us improve access to services and also to possibly coordinate services between organizations. And so we did some research on national best practices, we talked to comparable cities to find out what they were doing, and really the third piece of that was having a conversation with the organizations that are involved in this work, and acknowledging the work they do, understand what is happening, and then, um, you know, this is the kind of the final piece to, to go back and start forming some recommendations. Um, we absolutely plan to continue the conversation with them, these groups that participated today and others, and hope that, you know, along the way we'll, you know, we'll get some more really great ideas. Did you hear things that give you um, uh, some, some hope? Absolutely. I think there was a lot of... Um, Willingness to partner, willingness to coordinate. I think there's a lot of honesty in the room, um, a lot of good comments about work with the police department and the work that the police do, um, a lot of comfort with that. And so I think uh, there's absolutely a good foundation to start with. And, and some good suggestions about how to improve um, some of the, the quality of the food or the um, safety of the food, maybe the city. Uh, helping to provide food safety handling classes is one of the things that Ms. Cheever recommended, and, and we think that's a good idea. So, this, but this is the first time, really, that, that this collection of people who all are trying to do good mm -hmm. got together under one roof. In, in a long time, and I think Scott Ackerson mentioned, uh, with Haven for Hope, mentioned that before Haven opened, there had been a, a couple of conversations with the um, homeless feeding community, some some of them, but I don't um, I don't think it was this uh, large, or we had as much participation or as much input. So I think this one was um, much more productive. Something that Scott said today struck me very much, um, and he said we can't do it alone. Right, and and I think the city is. Um, Completely understands that the city can't do it alone, especially when it comes to serving a vulnerable population and those who need more assistance, maybe disabled or, or have mental health issues. It, you know, in, in everything we do in human services, we partner with other organizations, we collaborate. Um, anytime we start a new initiative, we say, okay, who can we collaborate with and partner with? Because we don't have all of the resources or all of the solutions, and we need to leverage um, the resources and thinking of other groups. And so I, I think that applies to this issue as much as it applies to any other. What, what, else, are your, what, what, what else are your big takeaways from today? Well, I think um, the, you know, the takeaway is that we had a, a room of people who want to keep going with this conversation, and so that's what, that's what we'll focus on doing. So good afternoon. Uh, you know, this is a great turnout, and I, on behalf of the City of San Antonio, I really appreciate you, all of you being here and showing up and participating in this event, in this conversation. And so the city has a long history of commitment to addressing homelessness in San Antonio. As Tony said, I, I do direct the Departments uh, of Human Services for the City of San Antonio, and that includes coordination of homeless initiatives that the city is involved in, as well as management of the homeless investments that the city makes. And so before we get started with our discussion, I want to provide, um, that Tony will facilitate, I, I do want to provide some background and an overview of the issue that we're here to talk about and our review of homeless feeding policy, as well as the goals for today's summit. And so as background, in April and May, the City Council Quality of Life Committee requested that staff provide a briefing on the current policies that regulate feeding of the homeless and compassionate feeding, and also to conduct uh, research on practices in, in, around the country and in comparable cities to San Antonio. Quality of Life staff, uh, rec uh, Council members recommended that staff develop policy options and recommendations that will support the compassionate efforts of charitable organizations and individuals, as well as protect the health and welfare of the community and the homeless. Based on our review of best practices and the input that we received today from you, we will um, 
plan to present policy options and recommendations to City Council in the fall. And so the purpose of today's summit, I think it's important to start out and, and give you a framework of what, what we're doing here today. Um, and we want the, you know, the most important thing is that we want to get your input on this issue. We're asking for your help to identify the barriers and challenges to feeding the homeless and those that are um, in crisis or are vulnerable. Um, but even more importantly, we want to get your ideas and your solutions and, your op and some of your ideas about the opportunities for feeding the homeless in the community. Additionally, we really want this summit to start the conversation. This isn't a one-time thing. We want to have ongoing conversations um, with you, the city does, but we also want you to have ongoing conversations between yourselves, a way to coordinate services and ensure that the homeless are um, being served in a safe manner. And so you've heard us say many times over the last few months that the city does not have a law or a regulation regarding homeless feeding or that prohibits homeless feeding. The city code starts with and follows state law. That's first and <coughs> foremost. Um, and it's state law for food safety. And then it also includes mobile vending and food establishments and distribution of food. These regulations apply to food that is sold or given out. Um, and it also regulates distribution of food for all organizations as well as charitable organizations. The distribution of food on private property um, without the permission of property owners may also um, be subject to trespassing laws. And I know everyone here believes that food safety is important. I don't think there's any doubt about that. One of the handouts at the, your table does talk about the things that any group can do. What, what is legal? What permits are available? What processes are open to the community to provide food um, in a charitable way? And so now, you know, with your input, we want to identify more opportunities for serving, serving the homeless. And so that's really the goal of today. And so in reviewing policy options, our primary focus is to ensure the safety and welfare of the community while encouraging and facilitating charitable acts. Ensuring food safety is particularly important with vulnerable populations who may be um, subject to uh, more impact from bad food, um, they have less opportunities to see medical, to seek medical attention. It's important that we protect that. We're also concerned with protecting property and the environment, whether it's public or private property, we want it to be left clean and safe. Um, and to be frank, this is the challenge of homeless feeding that we get the most complaints about. And the mess that's left when food packaging is, is thrown on the ground or when bathrooms are not available. And we know that this is not happening with every organization, um, but it's something that would be, need to be addressed in any policy that, that we either uh, review or develop. And finally, connecting the homeless to other services. That's the other thing that's, that's very important to the city. Um, you know, we can provide food today and that's important, but we want to make sure that people have the opportunity um, to connect to services that help them provide food for the rest of their lives. And so how can we facilitate ongoing coordination and provide opportunities for coordination? One way is through the community's homeless continuum of care, the South Alamo Alliance for the Homeless, um, also known as SARA. So SARA is a network of providers and stakeholders in the community, it already exists. They are always looking for uh, new organizations to provide insight and feedback on what's going on with the homeless. There are a lot of unique, um, there are multiple needs and not every, there's not one agency that can serve them all. And so SARA really provides a network of those agencies and we would encourage any of you to participate in that network. We have a membership from SARA here, the executive director, Billy Hubbard. Uh, and so hopefully through today's conversation, you can get to know about that organization. And finally, you know, the human toll of being chronically homeless is high and it's also avoidable. We spend a lot of um, resources on emergency care for the homeless, medical, health care, justice system, social services, and we think it's important to try to avoid that. And that is really the reason for the city's significant investment in homelessness. Um, in total, the city's annual budget includes $9.3 million for homeless services. The majority of that, yes, is at Haven for Hope, but a, a lot of that goes to community organizations such as SAM Ministries, St. Vincent de Paul, um, St. PJ's, organizations that are providing homeless prevention, rapid rehousing, and shelter services, as well as mental health services. It's a comprehensive continuum 
that we want homeless people to have access to. Um, it, and so, yes, Haven for Hope is the city's primary homeless investment, and we do encourage the homeless and um, people nearing homeless to seek services there because they're comprehensive and transformative. Um, and we encourage you to also, as you are, as you touch the homeless, in a lot of ways, you're the you're the front line, and and you have access and you have relationships with homeless individuals. And so we do encourage you to to help the homeless uh, seek those opportunities. And, and part of the reason we're here today is to have that discussion. And so we want to dive right into our conversation and get started on that. And so I'm going to turn it right back over to Tony. 